we're going to be talking a little bit about um, kids and how they're being affected by the, by the pandemic. And Alex is my brother, Jess is my sister-in-law, and they're new parents. So I feel like they're the best people to talk to about this. So thanks for joining. Thanks, thanks. for having us. Hi. <laughs> Let's start with a little bit about Leah. As a uncle, the pandemic has really impacted like my ability to see her and see her grow up. I just want to kind of, I want you to kind of, as new parents, walk me through how this may have impacted her and like how things were different than planned. Um, it's it's been really hard. You know, we <laughs> went into the beginning of last year, so like January 2020. I was working. Alex was working. And we were going, like we were planning on having a nanny or a babysitter of some kind, try to like, you know, work around our schedule mm -hmm. and watch our daughter when we needed her. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pandemic hit and we just kind of decided as, um, as a family that only one of us would be going out into work and the other one would be staying home with her. Um, so I decided to stay home while Alex went out to work. He also had to finish schooling hours, but it was really hard. I mean, I was around her 24 seven. It yeah. was me and her all the time <laughs> since March, almost a full year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and not being able to socialize with her, even just to like take her out on errands has been really like heartbreaking for me, honestly. Um, you, you mean like when you say socialize, you mean like socialize her, like talking to other kids and talking to other people besides just you and Alex? Other kids, other family members. I, you know, I had, I had also planned last year on maybe doing gymnastics with her or, you know, cause she's a very active girl and I wanted to get her into something last year, even though it would have been early for her. I just thought it would have been good because, you know, it's such a, it's like a prime time in development mm -hmm. between one and two and it's, you know, still, mm -hmm. but, uh, I really wanted to just get her out there and socializing really early in life. And I know things are opening up now, but, um, you know, we've still decided to be extra safe and mm -hmm. really strict on what we do. She doesn't know any different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, like have you Jess or Alex join any like parent like support groups on either online or like maybe even I don't know I, I, that'll be in person but yeah have you like I'm sure there's other parents going through the same is that something that you two have done yeah so I started reaching out I started using the peanut app okay. um just to like connect with other moms it helped me socialize <laughs> yeah in like, the best way I could is this like a webcam or is this like a like kind of just like text it's like text in the group no it's like an app that you find other people and then you kind of like talk to them can I be like 100 percent honest it's what? almost like this is kind of funny it's like a dating app it's like tinder for moms you literally wow. swipe through moms in your area <laughs> oh okay that gives me a better visual than you just swipe. yeah see like it's like, funny it's, like yeah i like this mom let me go talk to her let's let's kind of like get to know each other you put your interests you, know, right. you know the age of your kids that you have and you start talking it's like a friend finder pretty much but yeah I mean, like, for moms it's pretty cool yeah i've made some friends on there that's nice. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Any new moms out there can swipe right on Jess. <laughs> but yeah, but I have to like going back to like, I agree like with her about like her um, social um, skills. Like it's been, a, you know, very hard for um, her, especially like, um, you know, when we have family. Um, Even just stop by. You know, like over the, the summer or spring, you know, you guys just come by, but we, you know, kind of like meet in the, in the backyard. Yeah. And, you know, social distancing and all that. And it was hard for Leah because you could see like she was very like um standoff. Yeah, she would like, you know, put her head mm -hmm. head down, kinda like, who are these people? You know. So it's like um, It's hard when she does that even around family. Yeah. You know, we want her to be familiar with her family, obviously. Yeah. You know, yeah. if there's anybody that she's comfortable with, it should be family mm -hmm. members. Yeah. And she's not because of the situation. Right. It's just it's it's like she's She's in her territory, so like I kind of I get it, like, and she's not used to other people, but exactly, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I get that. I'm sure lots of other kids are also going through something similar. Now, kind of walk me back towards like the gymnastics 
the I think you said swimming classes. Um, where are things standing when it comes to like like things opening up or your thoughts on having her actually go out to these uh, extracurriculars? Well, like I know like um, Jessica's very concerned, you know, because there are new strains now. Um, they're still doing research to see if it's more, um, you know, stronger or not. So all these all, all these like things weigh in on her decisions. It's mainly but, uh, concerning also because I am pregnant again. So mm -hmm. we're trying to just be extra cautious now. One one option that we have right now, we're actually considering we're, we're very, very open to it is um, doing like outdoor soccer. But yeah. once it gets warmer, like around end of March or April. I and... think that would be good, actually. And right. the more I, I've like had time to think about it, I think I've become more open to it. Because um, honestly, I think even mentally for me to see yeah. her getting out there, actually, finally, <laughs> um, I think that'll just make me happy. So we're going to have to like work on her keeping the mask on now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be... D difficult for sure i yeah i hope i hope that she's one of those kids that are just like oh like this is pretty cool i'm, I'm gonna keep this on my face we'll yeah. see i'm gonna jump a little bit to work so you're because you two work with um kids with special needs or at least uh, right now it's mostly asd but um alex you've been working throughout the pandemic and school too which just to clarify that's all, that was all online correct yeah luckily um i was doing like an online master's program Part of the program was like I had to do like um, hours directly with um, clients. Can you describe like what exactly is your work? Well, you, I, this is my understanding of what you do, and you're my brother, and this is terrible because I don't understand what both <laughs> of you do. So I, I think you said it's ABA, like um, therapy for kids with ASD, ASD being autism spectrum disorder, and my understanding is that you are individually going to kids' homes. You're not in a big public school district or any school district, mm -hmm. or you're kind of like a more private person and you like, and you help with, um, you help parents out pretty much create plans or help their kids like learn or do like kind of, you, you, you like continue for me. Cause I'm not beyond that point, like what you do, I'm not sure what you do. Yeah. So at the time I was considered a, a behavior technician. Basically I work directly with, with, with the, um, the children. Mm -hmm. It was in their home setting. Every child gets um, a certain number of hours weekly. Mm -hmm. uh, I do work under um, a board certified behavior analyst. A BCBA picture of them as being the doctor and a behavior technician being like the nurse. You know, the BCBA goes, observes, applies. They create all these plans for mm -hmm. their behavior plans. Um, they train the parents and they train the BTs and then the BTs, the behavior technicians are the ones that are Wait, tell me something implementing that those programs. Okay. With your, um, your and some of the pro programs can be like oh. anything with social skills mm -hmm. um, or any um, self-help skills um, with skills such as brushing their teeth mm -hmm. or washing their face. Anything. <laughs> um, heating something up in the microwave. So basically like, you know, anything that they struggle with. Tell I mean, like, I haven't been working oh, okay, okay. time now because of, um, I started, I, I was starting from a test and actually, um, I'm I done with that. So now I am a BCBA. So I'm going to start <laughs> looking for, um, um, positions for that. Okay. When you did this, I'm guessing you're going, you're going with a face mask and you have to take your temperature or anything beyond the face mask. At the time when I was working, um, there was no requirement for me to wear one. Mm -hmm. And again, like I was pretty comfortable with the parents and the parents are comfortable with me. So we had an understanding. So we, there was no need for me to wear a mask. Wearing a mask can be sometimes hard when it comes to like teaching something to the child because oh, okay. it involves like communication, you know, mm -hmm. they have to, mm -hmm. have to like articulate things. Yeah. Are were any of the kids like also fearful if you wear a mask? It's not really my experience. I'm sure. I'm sure that probably was a situation with some, with some people, but I mm -hmm. didn't get to experience that the kids were you know they were fine i'm sure there i'm sure there were some of them that were scared mm -hmm. um some of the um children that we work with you know have sensitivity to like even wearing socks right wearing a hat wearing gloves yeah so i can just imagine how that could also like um generalize to like wearing a mask yeah. right so like uh, the reason why I, I really like 
talking to you two because as new parents too, you're also experiencing a whole new side to that people don't know of, and that's kids with with, with special needs. Like in the pandemic, they're they're dealing with mental health crises right now in high school levels, middle school levels. But you you just think about kids with special with special needs, the families, the the kids themselves. Like it, it feels like that's that's just like kind of just augments that reality of like just crappiness that the situation is right now. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's been hard for me to not have my almost two year old daughter socialize. I can only imagine, you know, one of the main things that we do as BCBAs, board certified behavior analysts, uh, you know, is we, we try to, we, we work on socially significant behaviors. Mm -hmm. That's part of like the definition of what we do. And, you know, to be a parent of somebody with autism where services might have been stopped Mm -hmm. or services or they decide to stop services or, you know, anything like that. I can only imagine how they were feeling like I I was I was hurting mentally. So, you know, it must have been like astronomical for them. Right. Because, I mean, some of these parents like need these services yeah the autism spectrum disorder you know it's a spectrum you know it can be very intense and very um impactful for the family mm-hmm. or it could be on the um other end where it could be like like how would i describe it like um, i guess like high functioning might have been the term or you know um, I think things are changing now with terminology they, they might they might be actually um out there working and maybe with some like with some accommodations but they're usually like more higher functioning they're able they're able to do more is that right right it's a broad even, it's, it's a broad spectrum like it can yeah. it, it affects every child differently every individual differently yeah even you more know. than that like, Brian. So, 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 yeah, <laughs> someone can no you're right because yeah. i um I, I totally um missed this but there's a cross-country runner that is at the national level he's good and yeah. and he he has asd and i mean it doesn't impact his like physical ability to run and kick ass so yeah, yeah of course. exactly yeah. <laughs> like it can affect like certain aspects of like um like your like socialization you know you can be like uh, uh i don't know, like a genius when it comes to like math that's it, yeah right but then there could be a little struggle with um communicating with others like yeah. socially they might not understand mm-hmm. some social cues or, you know. And then there's, there could be like individuals so many that, different um, things. you know, they're more dependent on others because like even a simple task as like brushing their teeth or tying their shoes, mm-hmm. it's like very, very hard for them. Yeah. So imagine like families like that have um, individuals like who are in, in that spectrum mm-hmm. and there are no services. So it impacts them greatly, especially um, yeah. working families. Mm-hmm. Um, I also feel like uh, I guess us going there provides some type of like mental break too for families because yeah. they feel like okay great someone's work from, working with my child mm-hmm. you know they're helping them they care about them mm-hmm. um, and then like to have all that you know taken away because of COVID you know I'm sure that definitely impacted a lot of families yeah uh, I have a lot of like accounts with like um, friends that you know clients were like improving greatly and then the pandemic happened and you know there was a regression mm-hmm. because they're not practicing you know picture a, a kid that you know goes a whole year in school and they're doing great then summer comes oh, <laughs> you yeah. know months without without study you know you're gonna there's gonna be a regression so oh, yeah. picture that so let's talk a little bit about the um the vaccine a little bit and maybe how how this might change things in the future. I know Alex, you were vaccinated, and just were you or not? Yeah, I I did it two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, we both got Moderna. Yeah. Uh, the, the first dose, was, oh. I mean, luckily it was pretty um simple. You just go in, mm-hmm. they poke you, you barely feel it. Yeah. The only side effects that I um, experienced was just a sore sore arm that lasted for like a day mm-hmm. and a half, and then. That was it. Yeah, me too. Actually, I just had a really sore arm, couldn't sleep on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, I was exhausted that night. Okay. But I felt fine the day after. 
aside from my arm, <laughs> I felt fine. I got it on a Friday and I didn't, I didn't feel good until Monday. Yeah. yeah. Half my class had symptoms of some kind and then half my class didn't. So I think it all depends. I mean, that's good. That's your body, you know, yeah. building the immunity and getting those antibodies ready. So yeah. that's a good sign. It's like worrisome because you obviously don't want to feel bad, but yeah. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> I'm happy with the way things are going so far. I'm going to just keep my eyes and ears open to where things go with the, the variants, how the vaccine might impact or how I might hopefully defend against it. But I'm also hopeful because it's almost warmer weather and that's also a good thing too. Right. I know, um, like I was a little, not a little, I, I we hesitated because, you know, he was able to get the vaccine early January and I was eligible too. However, because I was pregnant, we hesitated. We, okay. You know, we thought about it, um, did the research. And I know there's, you know, not everybody, mm -hmm. especially who, you know, not everybody in general, but especially if you're pregnant is going to get the shot and, you know, whatever is best for you, mm -hmm. you got to do what's best for you. Um, but we just, you know, after doing the research and like mm -hmm. discussing it a lot, we felt that it was best, especially if he is going to be going into more homes now mm -hmm. being a BCBA, um, with the different variants. Yeah. Um, and I just saw a lot of really scary stories mm -hmm. of moms who did get COVID mm -hmm. um, even later in the pregnancy. And, you know, I had a doctor, my doctor said, please, please get it when you can, because we don't want to see any more pregnancy loss or like late term pregnancy loss or stillbirths. It's really scary. Um, I still even struggled after getting the shot, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, just because there are still unknowns. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I felt like we made the right decision for us, what we thought we, you know, we're, we're looking at the science of it and just saying, okay, well, it's similar to a flu shot. Like this really should be fine for my body and for the baby's body. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, you know, it's like, you just hope and pray that mm -hmm. you're doing the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> you weighed the risk and you decided to get it in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, I you? didn't want to get COVID. I yeah. felt like the risk of getting COVID was much greater than the risks of uh, right. the vaccine. Because, like, I mean, even though, like, with those situations with, like, um, those women that experience those complications with pregnancy, mm -hmm. it may have been a small percentage. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly what the percentage is. You know, right. It's different for everybody. But it's more like, it has been. I guess, because there's a chance that it can happen, we'd rather be safe. And it's not for everybody. Like yeah. this isn't us trying to say mm -hmm. yeah. everybody needs to get vaccinated or, you know, everybody, every pregnant woman needs to get vaccinated. Um, the, this the, is just something that we decided. Yeah, we decided to yeah. The, yeah. the thing is, the, the thing is, Moderna didn't study their trials on, on pregnant women. They didn't, no, no, he they did. They didn't yeah. study on kids under 16. So yeah. of course, like there's, there's unknown. Right. Exactly. Right. And there is a little, you know, I, even though it is a new vaccine, mm -hmm. what we do know is that there still has been, you know, a decade of research on the type of vaccine that it is. Yeah. Um, and they, again, my doctor said it's very similar to the flu shot, mm -hmm. which I, I got the flu shot last time I was pregnant. You know, they recommend that to pregnant women. So, yeah. you know, if you're just going by science and if you're you're going by that type of data, which mm -hmm. I think you should. Yeah. Then, um, I think I think in the aggregate, like it ends up being so much better because you can you mitigate like you're protecting your herd, essentially. Like that's that's what it is. Like you're getting vaccinated. I say I try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's let's. um. Let's let's act a little bit. I'm gonna act, rehearse. I don't know what I'm the word I'm looking for, but let's say, let's say I'm a parent, and I'm asking, I'm asking you real quick, like as a friend, as a like you're you're going you're seeing my child, and I just randomly ask you, hey, like I hear the COVID vaccine is is new and all that, and like I've read a lot of things about vaccines. I'm concerned about it causing maybe um, autism in some kids or something like that, like, what do you, like, how would you respond to a parent that, like, is questioning this vaccine, and, like, well, I mean, I guess just to start off, like, the reason why a lot of parents question vaccines and how they link it to autism 
goes back to um, this researcher who actually um, did a research, but it was all like fraud. And he was, he actually got in trouble for it. And his studies are the, one, one of the reasons why a lot of parents like don't believe in the, in um, vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, so he got discredited with that, but the, the damage was done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like in 1998, a small study by uh, Wakefield was conducted, which suggested a link between vaccinations and autism and spectrum disorder. The study underwent further inspection and has since, since been um, retracted and the provider's medical license was taken away due to falsified information. Mm -hmm. Since then, there have been more than over 25 studies that have disproven a connection between autism and the MMR vaccine. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, um, the research that I was referring to where, you know, a lot of parents in the late nineties kind of like accepted as concrete evidence um, with, with the link with autism. Um, you have to like do your own research and look into it and kind of like make your own. Do your own decision. research, mm -hmm. I think, but with caution mm -hmm. because the internet, you can go down very, or a lot of right, like, um, different rabbit holes. Right, look for like actually like. Go to your doctor, <laughs> actually, discuss yeah. it with your doctor. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you the concrete information. Yeah. You know, they're going to give you the facts and the data and you know, mm -hmm. just be upfront and honest about your concerns because it's okay to have concerns. It's okay, mm -hmm. but question it. And then, you know, yeah. listen to the feedback that you're getting from the professional. Yeah, because there are a lot of like, like um, proven research out there or things like essential oils. There could be some truth to it, but I feel like it's more correlation. Mm -hmm. like There's they're, not enough research. Yeah, they're just, to... I think they're just correlating. Like, oh, like it worked for this for me, then it must be true. And they kind of like advertise it um, without actually doing like like a full research on it to see if it's actually um, a cause and effect, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like Jessica said, I think the most important thing is like, yeah, go to your doctor, talk to them. <laughs> if a parent, like, I feel like it's a very sensitive subject because like, yeah. you know, as a professional, if a parent is doing that, I don't want to like, you know, overstep. Yeah. Like, but if they're asking me my opinion, then I'll provide, you know, in a nice, polite way, you know, like, well, the research suggests mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, there is no link, there is no correlation right. that vaccines cause um, autism. And I would just leave it at that because, you know, they have my right to their beliefs and, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to like push on them and stuff. I can only provide what I know right. and it's up to them if they want to accept it. Yeah. So Jess, you said mm -hmm. talk to your doctor. And that's, that's the first thing anyone should do. Talk to the doctor. We do yeah. live in the world, unfortunately, where doctors oh, don't always listen to you. So if you didn't feel great about your doctor, what would you do next? If you don't feel great about your doctor, then maybe find another one. <laughs> like there's, you know, there are so many professionals and, you know, people out there with the research. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just think the internet can be a dangerous place sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like, don't be afraid to get like a double opinion from another the second opinion. A second opinion from, from like uh, another professional. You know. Like, yeah, I just asked that because you're a parent, and I. It seems like your experience has been good, but I just wanted to know like what would happen if like it wasn't. Oh, I'll give you like an example, like um, that I had with um, Leah. Mm -hmm. She had like some like um, like little rashes coming mm -hmm. in her legs. And I was concerned because I was like, I mean, I was new parents, so I didn't know what that was. So I was like, let me take it to the doctor. <laughs> so they said, oh, it's probably a heat rash or something like that. So, you know, I, as a parent, I'm going to start questioning that. And I'm like, so I was looking on Google, you know, being yeah. my own research, comparing it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it could be a heat rash. And, and But I informed myself about it, like how long a heat rash lasts, mm -hmm. what can help it. I followed what the doctor said, but it was still there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so that tells me that it's not a heat rash. So I had to go back to the doctor and kind of like tell him again. I think we did like three appointments. It was like a period of like a week or two weeks, I think. And we finally, finally got a diagnosis. Eczema? No, it was a or, Koksaki. Oh, the Koksaki. Yeah, the Koksaki. Koksaki. Like the yeah. hand and foot hand and mouth. Hand and foot and mouth. The Which is funny because the, yeah. we weren't doing anything. So I don't really know how that happened. Well, so I guess, but, I mean, that was one experience where like, I was kind of like questioning the doctor and I had to like go to like different doctors because like I didn't like what one doctor said to me. So I wanted to kind of like 
get a second opinion from another one and see if they were on the same page or if it was different. Mm-hmm. I went to three three different doctors and I think it was yeah. like... It was all within the same practice, but right. each time we saw somebody new. Because we wanted a different opinion. You know, yeah. we, um, I felt like that was very helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it happens like doctors aren't perfect or sometimes it's too early to like tell exactly you, time, you don't you know? want to like exactly. overstep or over diagnose right off the bat too mm-hmm. if it's not what it is you know okay here's a side question if i get once i get my second dose how comfortable do you feel me coming in the house with like a face mask still or i what's like what's your what's your thought process there like i'm vaccinated well i guess i like, guess um the concern is more like you know i'm gonna be vaccinated she's gonna be vaccinated but Leah's not vaccinated and my mom and my father-in-law live with us and you know they're high up in age like high 50s yeah I still want to like I think wait a little bit Mm -hmm. because I want to wait for more research I'm really hoping Mm -hmm. that you know once more people are vaccinated and like we start getting into spring and summertime that you know scientific officials start saying like you know you're less likely to transmit it once you have the vaccine. Once I hear that, <laughs> we're good. Okay. Then, uh, then Alex can play soccer and we can go swimming. Because yeah. honestly, like, you know, if you're vaccinated, you're going to be less likely to have symptoms, right? So right. you're not going to be spreading because you're not going to be sneezing, doing this and that. And if mm-hmm. you wear a mask, yeah, you're going to be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially just you're also, again, you're pregnant and and it's all about risk mitigation so i totally understand that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and i think research for children won't be available until like early next year so yeah with vaccine i think they're starting or they have started that or something like that i think the trial's starting yeah yeah, for young children Mm -hmm. yeah uh let's see is there anything that you want to talk about i don't know (laughs) (laughs) any tips for a new parent any tips for a new mother um, I guess a tip for parents from my experience is like try and get plenty of sleep when your children are sleeping <laughs> if you can. Um, rest is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, don't panic too much for um, things that you're unsure of. You know, just go through the process, go to your doctor. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah, don't panic. You yeah. know, it's, it's very hard for first time parents because everything is new. especially I think you know even though you know this has been such a tough year mentally on everybody um I think one of the good things about it is that I did get so much time with Leah Mm -hmm. so I think you know we can also kind of learn from this a little bit even though it's hard to (laughs) um you know I can appreciate that I was given so much time with Leah and I was given so much time to learn about her, you know, and just, I now have that time that I probably would have been working had this not happened. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, technically she yeah. is working from home with her daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, um, I, I hope that we live in the future where we're in the future. Uh, there are more programs or like more employers that have more time to offer for fathers and mothers. I know in European countries, parents have a lot more time off with their mm-hmm. kids. And yeah. and I think Americans got to see that. And I, that is a silver lining that, that like there were, there was a, a time period that parents, they get to spend more time with their kids, help help in their, pro, in their first couple months of life. And I don't think a lot of parents have have had that. So yeah, I think that's a good silver lining. So thank you so much for joining. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And everyone watching, Alex and Jess, my sister-in-law, my brother, I love them a lot. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank, thank you. Us. See ya. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I hope to be posting future content like this. I think parents dealing with and struggling with this pandemic is, it's a major issue and it doesn't get mentioned enough. And that kind of perspective of working with kids with special needs is another element that I like that they had. I think it's pretty much where I want to go with things with my YouTube channel, having long talks like this and really getting into the weeds of some things on how people feel. Now, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, subscribe. It means the world to me. Plus it drags people from other 
um, parts of the YouTube universe and drags them into my channel instead of watching other garbage. Now they can watch my amazing, great content. Follow my social media uh, sites, be at the BC Talk on Twitter and Instagram. And as opposed to YouTube, where I'm just posting once a month about certain issues, you can follow me on at the BC Talk and I'll be posting about a different array of issues as they come up. I tend to be more active on those on a day-to-day -day basis as opposed to YouTube where I'm just posting once a month and you get to see my thoughts, my opinions on certain things, maybe what I'm following, what I think positively on and what I don't. Go ahead and follow me on social media and as always, I'll see you next time.